So I have a really unique opportunity. I was invited to volunteer with Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks to sample grayling around the Bozeman area. And Mike Duncan, who was in the film that we made called The Dam That Never Was, which if you haven't seen, the link is now up above my head. But Mike Duncan is now a fisheries biologist for Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks in Bozeman. So Mike has been tasked with getting genetic samples from the grayling and the lakes in this area. And so we're gonna go out and sample fish, which apparently the, the main method that they use is hook and line. I'm, I'm all in on a hook and line sampling. I'm gonna meet up with Mike and his tech, who I have yet to meet, and then Rick, who is also in the film, The Dam That Never Was. We're gonna meet up with them and we're going to go sample grayling. I'll let Mike fill in all the details of uh, how we do that. Going around to each one of the, the lakes in the region, collecting genetic samples, and then that gives us a, a good idea of genetic diversity and, and hopefully the origin of each one of these populations because they've been stocked into these lakes decades ago. And we're hoping to get a good idea of where they came from, whether they originated from a stream or from a lake, what part of the state, and then that'll help us to determine which populations we want to use for reintroduction efforts in southwest Montana. Arctic grayling, as you can figure by the name, tend to prefer cold water, cold clean water, and we're on the very southern edge of their distribution. We've got a few populations left in the Big Hole Centennial, one that's been reestablished on the Ruby, and so we're, we're trying to make a big push to get some populations reestablished in some of their historic habitat here in the Gallatin Madison watersheds where you know a hundred years ago they were once pretty abundant but because of the over harvest the non-natives dewatering certain habitat issues these populations no longer exist but we're hoping that with some changes in habitat and management that we can get some populations reestablished and maintain some some strong populations here at the uh, southern extent of their distribution. Take a, a small fin clip on the pelvic or anal fin and fish is completely fine. That gives us enough tissue sample to, to get a genetic analysis and release the fish unharmed and that, that fin will grow back uh, over the next couple months. Finished getting our samples from the second of four lakes. This time it's a little bit bigger water. Um, so we're gonna do some electrofishing. We have a backpack electrofishing unit that we use for smaller water. So electrofishing sends a small electric current through the water and it essentially stuns the fish. Uh, they're not able to swim. It enables us to, to capture them, net them, and then as soon as they're out of electricity or we let off the button, uh, they can swim away. So if you're doing it right, it doesn't hurt them. Uh, we can release them back into the water they'll settle back in and go about their spawning and feeding um, like we were never here. We get our last lake next week and send everything off to our geneticists in Missoula as will the rest of the biologists in region three. 
and then we should have a pretty good idea of what we got to work with for our reintroduction efforts throughout uh, Region 3 with Graylin. I think that's one thing that's super cool about Montana FWP is they, they take care to do something like this, is they take time to try to understand these genetics before they're stocking back into these rivers and streams. And the science is constantly evolving, so that it's it's really interesting to to be involved with these projects and hear what's going on, see what they're trying to do to establish these populations back, and they're constantly learning more and adapting how they go forward. And I like that, I think that's really cool. So it's fun for me to make these videos because I originally went to school for fish and wildlife management. Uh, then I later went to art school to become a filmmaker, but I'm starting to have a lot of friends who are becoming biologists and moving up in the world of fish and wildlife management. So it's fun for me to go see what they're up to and kind of use hunting and fishing as a conduit to tell those stories. So let me know if you're enjoying these videos. I want to make more. There's a lot of opportunity out there to learn about wildlife while we hunt them or while we're fishing for them. I don't know. Yeah, let me know if you're enjoying them. Thanks for watching.